Hello, this is Catherine from Accelerated Reader, reading books for you. Today, I will be reading Chapter 3 from Five Sisters, Warriors of Vanilla by Kathy Marwin. Before I begin reading, I would like to give a big thanks to the author for sending me this book to read on my channel. In the description below, I've included links where you may find and purchase this book. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Chapter 3. Lou had a strange dream tonight. At the beginning of her dream, she was on the seashore, where she usually spends her free time. She played her guitar until she heard someone call her. It was some unknown voice coming from a distance. Lou stood up and looked around. She didn't see anyone. Who are you? Lou asked, hoping that voice would answer her. It doesn't matter. The question is, who are you, Lou? A mysterious voice said. I'm a court maid, nothing more, but I'm interested in who you are. You shouldn't worry about that. I ask you again, who are you really? Lou was completely confused. She didn't know what was happening or who was calling to her. She had so many questions. I'm, I'm nobody. I'm just one disobedient court maid who longs for adventure. That's not true. You are a very special person without even realizing it. You crave for an adventure a great adventure. So, what are you waiting for? Go into the unknown. You don't belong here. What do you mean? Lou asked. I said what I said. You may not realize it, but you will soon become a legend. What legend? What are you talking about? Lou said in confusion. I'm talking about your destiny. Ofreno said that you can't choose your destiny, but that's not true. You have two destinies to choose from. Now I ask you, what do you want to be? A maid or a warrior? I don't know. I really don't know if I can do that. I know almost nothing about combat. Deep down, you know a lot about combat. You were born for it. Now, listen to me. You have to go across the sea, and only then will you realize who you really are. I can't go there. That's too dangerous. Don't worry. Nothing will happen to you. Seriously? Yes, seriously. You have to listen to me. Goodbye, Lou. No, don't go. I need to know more. You already know that. Goodbye. No, stop. Stay here. Goodbye, Lou. And that's when her dream ended. When Lou woke up, she felt kind of weird. The dream was confusing, but it also got her attention. She had been thinking about it all morning. The dream seemed so real to her, like some life-changing message. Then she made her choice. She really decided to go overseas. She wanted to find out what was the mysterious voice talking about. She went to the armory to find the equipment she needed. She decided to wear an orange t-shirt with black leather pauldrons, brown knee-length pants, and a strap over her hair. She no longer felt like a court maid. Tonight's dream made her behave like this. She was no longer afraid that the king and queen would find out about her intentions. She just wanted to run away into a new life, far away from the castle and her painful memories. Before she left, she took an old sword that belonged to a great hero. The sword was a bit odd looking. It was flat on one part and on top it had curved parts. 
In the space between the curved parts, it had purple glass. This sword, in Lou's opinion, was the best one she had ever seen. Therefore, she decided to take it in case she finds herself in trouble. A voice from her dream told her that deep inside she knew something about the combat. And Lou even began to believe it. She headed for the seashore. She took a wooden boat there and headed into the unknown. At the start of the journey, everything seemed nice. The sun was shining high on the sky and a pleasant breeze was blowing. Everything was calm and quiet, as if there was no one nearby. The sea was calm and dear, really suitable for navigation. The smell of the sea was intense, but relaxing. It seemed to Lou that this trip would be really easy. But soon the quiet and pleasant experience ended. Lou found herself in the thick gray mist that was rising over the sea. The sun was no longer visible and the wind became cold. Everything was still quiet, but it didn't seem so safe anymore. Suddenly, Something shook the boat. Lou got scared and grasped the boat firmly. Just then, she realized what it meant to sail a dangerous sea. But that wasn't the worst. Suddenly, Lou spotted a sea beast pushing her boat. The beast was approaching and jumping over the vessel, shaking it again. Lou responded quickly. She took the sword and waited for the beast to appear again. She looked all around. She couldn't really see much because of the thick fog that was everywhere, but she could hear everything loud and clear. Then the beast jumped out of the water again. Only this time, Lou surpassed her. She pierced the beast with a sword. The dead creature fell into the water and began to float on the surface. Lou cheered. She really has something that warriors have. She had never used the sword for real before, but she immediately knew how to use it. Although it was most likely beginner's luck, she was proud of herself and that was a new motivation to continue with the journey. She continued to sail through the thick fog until she reached a small island. She landed there and tied a boat. The island she was on was quite small and full of vegetation and colorful flowers. It seemed pretty safe, but it was probably unexplored. So Lou had to be on guard. Fortunately, the island was so small that there was no chance of getting lost. She decided to take a walk and explore a little. When she came to the center of the island, she saw something she had not expected. It was a small stone house. Lou was greatly surprised. She didn't think anyone lived here, let alone had their own house here. Since her curiosity was overwhelming, she decided to explore the mysterious stone cottage. She slowly approached it to examine it more closely. At first, the house looked very old because it was covered with various plants and moss. Lou wondered if anyone lived in it at all. Maybe the house is abandoned for a long time, or maybe there is some danger lurking in it. There were so many options. Lou had no choice but to knock on the door. Nothing happened, probably because she knocked too softly. She knocked on the door again, but this time she made it louder. She hoped someone would answer. At that moment, the door opened by itself and there was a strange creature in front of Lou. It was blue, a bit like a wolf but with a big puffy orange tail. The creature stared directly at Lou, looking at her 
with a sharp glance. Lou felt that she was not welcome here. The creature continued to stare at Lou, only to start growling this time. Suddenly, a voice appeared out of nowhere. Now Lou started to believe that the voice from her dream was real, but she was still not completely sure. Then the creature abruptly calmed down and an unknown voice got closer. A girl appeared behind Lou. Lou turned slowly and saw her. It was a girl of medium height with black wavy hair, which was sea blue in one part of her hair, covering her right eye. She had something like a hood on her head, just more like a hat. Her eyes were also sea blue, and she wore a wide blue tunic with a pink purple strap and also wide winning gray pants. She stood upright and had an oval pale pace. She began to stare at Lou with a strange look. Who are you and what are you doing here? The girl asked. Um, I come in peace, Lou mumbled. Okay then, but can I trust you? The girl said doubtfully. At that moment, Lou dropped the sword from her hand. I think I can, the girl said, seeing that Lou had put away her sword. Oh, sorry, I didn't even introduce myself. My name is Lou. Very unusual and short name. My name is Anna Loken. Oh, nice to meet you, Lou said, shaking hands with Anna Loken. Anyway, what brings you here? At that moment, Lou paused. She didn't have a clear reason why she was here. She decided to make up something to make it more interesting. I came from far away. I am a great warrior and adventurer. This island was just on my path. Lou started with her fake story. That sounds very interesting. Unlike you, I just live here and rarely make the trip. This stone house is my house, and this sweet creature is my faithful friend, Vani. Anna Loken spoke. So, this island is actually yours? Yes. However, I did not expect visitors. But since you are already here, you will be my guest. Okay. Lou readily accepted. The girls entered the stone cottage. The inside was actually very nicely decorated. It was full of bookshelves and flower vases. Anna Loken and Lou continued their conversation. This is a nice little house you have, Lou said. Oh, thank you. If you ask me, it's nothing special. Anna Loken opposed. I know, but I want to say that you arranged it nicely. Why don't you live on Vanilla? Oh, I have one reason, but I can't tell you. Please tell me. I promise I won't tell anyone, Lou insisted. I'm sorry, Lou, but I don't know you well enough and I don't know if I can trust you. You can trust me. I am almost like your friend, seriously. I'm sorry, but I can't. Anna Loken sighed. We just met. Isn't it enough that I put down my sword and told you who I am? Just stop it. You have to tell me, Lou said rudely, scaring Anna Loken with a threatening face expression. Do you always act like this? Obviously, you're some kind of bully when you are threatening me like that. Anna Loken was angry with Lou. Only then did Lou realize how rude she was and what problems she could cause with such behavior. She wished she hadn't acted like this. 
but she couldn't undo what had already been done. She decided that she would try to curb some of her bad habits and that she would calm down a bit. I didn't mean it that way. I'm really sorry, Lou apologized. I accept your apology, but next time, try not to do something like this again. However, I have decided to tell you what it's about. Follow me. Anna Loken said and went outside. Lou listened to what Anna Loken had to say and then followed her to another place. They came to a sandy beach on the other side of the islet. Anna Loken stood upright and raised her right arm extending it toward the sea. She closed her eyes and held out her palm to the water. Suddenly, the water began to rise. It looked as if it was being controlled by Anna Loken herself. When she abruptly lowered her hand, the water returned to its original position. Lou was impressed by what she had just seen. She had so many questions. I cannot believe it. How did you do that? I've never seen anything like this before, Lou said. I've known how to do that since I know myself. I don't even know how I do it, but it is unusual that this only affects seawater, not plain water. To me, it's like some amazing ability I possess, Anna Logan said. It looked like you had some connection to seawater. I know, but I'm not sure how others would react to it. Maybe they would consider it some evil power or something like that. So that's why you live here. You're actually hiding from the others? I wish I didn't have to. I tried to find out where my ability came from, but I couldn't find anything. I read a lot of books to find an explanation, but I couldn't find anything. It is obviously a still unknown phenomenon. Oh, I see. Anyway, should we go back to the house? Sure. Now that you know what this is all about, I hope you don't have any new questions. I don't have any. Anna Logan and Lou returned to the house. The rest of the day, they hung out, but Lou decided to return to the castle. She didn't care how people from the castle would react to her absence all day. So she came home carefree. There she was again, greeted by an angry king and queen. But this did not upset her. They punished her by appointing a guardian that will prevent her from running away again. Lou had an idea. She decided to leave the castle again. And she knew exactly how. Thank you for listening. Stay tuned for chapter four. Don't forget to like and subscribe. In the description below, I've included links where you may find and purchase this book.